I started to look at how Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies move and maneuver in the economy when it gets tight. They'll cut spending, they'll cut back on cost of things. Lastly, they will downsize, they will cut employees. And I had to realize that considering that I am the business, I need to conduct myself in the same manner. Now, I invest on a regular, consistent basis. I don't care how much I have, a portion of that I'm going to put into investments that are growing, that are accruing dividends, which pays me dividends. I learned to cut unnecessary spending and I learned to minimize the cost of the goods that I am buying. Trying something different today. It is beautiful, so I figured I'd come outside and record this video, especially considering what we're gonna be talking about today. And it's interesting because, of course, I'm writing in my journal. And the page that I'm on today, it says, problem solving ideas happening. So of course, I wrote above it, financial problem solving ideas happening. Because that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So if you didn't see my last video, after this one, make sure you go back and watch that and piece it all together. First, I wanna share with you a story. This story is 20 years old and it's from a girlfriend who I helped get her finances in order. She was in the red on everything. She had every single utility bill with a shut off notice, a disconnect notice. She was barely paying her rent, piecing together two of her paychecks to pay her rent and she was behind every single month on her rent. She was living in debt and literally living hand to mouth. So. I discussed with her that I can help get you in a better situation, but you have to trust me and you have to do exactly what I said. So here's what we did. When she got paid, she handed over her entire paycheck to me. The very first thing I did was gave her an allowance. Sometimes that would only be $20 for the next two weeks. But that's what it was. Got her bills starting from the most behind to the least behind. I got all her bills paid up. We got everything together and ahead in three months. But I gave her an allowance first. And then I paid little by little by little on every one of her bills. And it was rough, especially with sometimes her only getting $20 to spend. And I was very strict. Like, if you blow through this $20 on meaningless things, that's on you. You do not have any more money to spend, to play with, to buy a sandwich with, to buy a drink with, to do anything with until your next paycheck. And so, we went through this, we did this for three months, and then it just continued. I even saw in her skin that a weight was lifted. From there, her kids had the absolute best Christmas that I know they ever had. And this is not cap. Her kids had a wonderful Christmas. They had an abundance of gifts. She was able to actually afford to buy things. She bought something, ended up forgetting it somewhere, and had the money to buy it again, and still had money afterwards. That is what afford means. That's affordability. If you can't buy something twice and still have money, you cannot afford it. You're taking money from probably some other bill or some other source or some other savings or investment. You cannot afford it. So I just wanted to share that little backstory with you of the way I even conduct my finances now, but this was 20 years ago. So I've been in this frame of mind for a very, very, very long time. And it's because I study and learn from those who are way ahead of where, I'm, where I am, because that's where I aspire to be. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna share with you five financial problem solving ideas, tactics more so, that you can use to get yourself out of whatever non-savory financial situation that you're in right now from living paycheck to paycheck to being able to breathe a little bit more. So as I just stated in the story that I share with you, the very first one is to pay yourself first and then save and invest what's left. Pay yourself first. It does not matter how little or how much you're able to do that. But when you get your paycheck, 
you set aside money that is yours to put away. You're paying everybody but yourself. You're paying your landlord or the bank if you have a mortgage. You're paying whatever grocer for your food. You're paying whatever retail store. You are paying everyone except yourself. You have to pay yourself first and then disperse what's left. Because what poor people do, and in that poor mindset, you try to save what's left after spending. That never works. And at the end of the quarter, or at the end of the year, you have nothing to show for your year's worth of work, or your three months worth of work. You have absolutely nothing to show. But when you get into the habit of paying yourself first, and investing, or saving, or spending, or paying your bills after you have paid yourself first, the habit gets easier and easier and easier. And then you find yourself in less debt, less debt, less debt. So then you're able to move on to the next steps. So that's number one. Pay yourself first, regardless of how much or how little it is. That is vital. The next one is to create a budget and stick to it. The purpose of a budget is to help you get ahead of your finances. The purpose of a budget is not to make you feel like you are suffering or you're going without. The problem is, you're living above your means. You're buying things that you cannot afford to buy. You're spending money to impress people that are not in any better financial situation than you are. And no one cares. So create a budget and stick to that budget. It's going to be difficult, but you have to do it. You mean to tell me living hand to mouth is not difficult? Living paycheck to paycheck is not difficult? Working your face off with nothing to show for it. You mean to tell me that's not difficult? Life is difficult. Like I told my kids, you have to choose your difficulty. Are you gonna choose what's difficult now, but will be easier and better for you in your later years in life? Or choose what's difficult now, and it will be even more difficult for you in your later years of life? Which one? Which one do you want? I think it would be better to choose what's difficult now and then have it easier in your later years in life. Have better habits in your later years in life. Have more money, more investments. Have better money habits. Be able to create an even better budget for yourself as your money increases or as your habits increase. So number two is to create a budget and stick to it. As I just shared with you about the story with my girlfriend who I helped get her finances in order, we created a budget and no matter how much she whined, how much she complained, how much she cursed me out because it was not without me taking some level of anger, okay? But I had to show her that the purpose of this budget is to get you out of all these disconnect notices. You have children that are big enough to see your mess ups. Her youngest was 10 and I think her first one, she had two children and he was like 16 or something they're watching you they they see these disconnect notices they see you hiding from the phone calls so you have to create a budget and stick to it no matter how tough it is because it's only tough in the short term so sit down itemize with a pen and paper exactly what your total monthly income is how much money are you bringing in every single month and then next to that, write down exactly what your outgoing expenses are. How much money is going out the door every single month? And from here, this is where you begin to create your budget. And again, stick to the budget. Regardless of what happens, you must stick to your budget. So let's move on to number three. Don't come for me, y'all. Don't come for me. But you have to take a close look at your needs and your wants. Many people who are at the poverty line and living below the poverty line, they confuse their needs with their wants. And you're spending all this money on things that you want, but do you need it? Do you need a new pair of shoes? How many pairs of shoes do you have already? Do you need a new outfit? How many clothes do you already own? These are not needs. I hate to be the one to break it to you. These are not needs. You don't need another excessive liability for your survival. So take a close look at your needs versus your wants. Write down all of the things that you need for your survival. Your shelter, your food, you already have clothes, we already got that out of the way. Your personal hygiene products. For women, it's also gonna be your feminine products. These are things that you need. Your oral care products, all these different things are needs. So then, how can you reduce the cost of this? We talked about this on the last video. Again, make sure you watch that. I'll leave a card for that video right here. However you can reduce the cost of the um, need items without, without sacrificing quality. Because quality is going to be quantity any and every day of the week. Now, if you're already buying 
the worst and the cheapest fluoride toothpaste. I would recommend spending a little more money on a better natural toothpaste with no fluoride. Two things, it's going to last you a lot longer because you're not gonna to need to use as much and it's going to be a lot better for you. It's going, the results will be better. Your breath will be fresher. Your teeth will look whiter. Everything about it is going to be better. So I'd recommend spending a little more money on better quality things because you're going to use less of it in the same time duration, which means it's going to last you longer, which also means you're not going to be buying it as often as you buy this cheap product, right? So take a look at your needs versus your wants, really itemize it and focus more on your needs and remove the wants. Remove the wants altogether. This is temporary. It's not something you're going to have to do forever, but you're doing it right now. You're delaying your gratification for these wants for when you're in a better position to afford the wants. So that's number three. Create a financial deadline. Have a money goal. You cannot save your way to financial um, security. But what you do, you have something that you want to invest in that is going to appreciate, that is going to produce income, something that is going to pay dividends, an asset producing, um, an income producing asset, whatever it is, right? So you have that money goal. So you know you're not just putting away this money and paying yourself first and not knowing what you're going to do with the money. And as you are paying yourself first, this is the time duration that you begin to look at certain investments. You begin to look at things that you want to do with whatever money goal that you will eventually create for yourself. So again, number four is to create a financial deadline. Have a money goal. This is vital because it gives you something to aim at. It's like if you think of a dartboard, if you've ever played darts, you know the bullseye with the highest points is in the center. It's that small circle in the center. And every circle, every ring outside of that has a line and a, and a dollar amount. And you notice the, well, point of my, you notice the point amount at the very edge is the smallest. You got the 5, the 10, the 20, and then the 50 is the bullseye. Why is that? Because if you're just throwing aimlessly, your chances of hitting the wall or the $5 is much greater because you're just, you're just throwing. You don't have a direction. You don't have a goal. You're not aiming at anything in particular. So you're going to hit the least or hit nothing at all. But when you direct your focus and decide I'm going to aim for okay I need twenty dollars to win this game the 20 points so I'm gonna aim for the 20 or I want to just start off with clear-cut focus so I'm gonna aim at the bullseye each and every time so I can rack up these points quickly and win the game quicker right so this is why it is vital to have a money goal and a financial deadline that leads us to number five change the way you think about money and the people who have it. It does not benefit you to think so negatively about money. Money is simply a tool. That is it. It is a thing. It is a noun, right? And if you want to corrupt scripture, scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money is the root of all evil. This is removing accountability. And what the love of money being the root of all evil means is when you have no integrity around what you will do for a dollar, that is where the evil comes in. It's not having a desire for wealth because scripture speaks from uh, Genesis about wealth and how the wickedness is in poverty, right? So change the way you think about money and the people who have money. If you knew that your friend just talks horribly about you when you're not around and thinks the lowest of you when you're not around, then would you want to be friends with that person? If you find out that they think the lowest of the low of you, is this someone that you'd want to have around? No, it isn't. Money is an energy, and it is the same way. The fact that you think so poorly and so negatively and so sour about money is possibly why it just flies through your hands. Because you don't see any benefit of it. You just know it sucks to not have it, and you feel like some kind of monopoly on money, and certain people have it, and certain people don't. No, that's not the case. It's the way you think about it, and it's the way you think about people with money. Because if you think people with money are wicked and evil people, then why would you want to aspire to be that? Again, it's removing accountability. You have the ultimate control over who you are, over your character, over your personality. Money is like clear quartz. It only emphasizes what's already there. If you don't think negatively about clear quartz, 
which again, it emphasizes what is already there. It magnifies what is already under the surface. Then you shouldn't think negatively about money. It is another form of a clear quartz. It is an energy, and it can be used to magnify the best of what's in you. You can use money to help those that you want to help, starting with yourself, starting with your loved ones, starting with those closest to you. Would you try to remove a screw with a hammer? You're using the wrong tool. That's why you're not making any progress. Would you try to flip a pancake with a colander, you know, a strainer? You're not going to get anywhere. So you need the proper tools for whatever it is you're trying to do. And money is simply a tool. It's not anything to think negative about. You would not hang around people who think poorly of you when you're not around. So you have to view money and your finances and the way you conduct your finances the same exact way. So I want to recap before we end these five financial uh, problem solving ideas for you. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you like the video, and again, be sure to check out my previous video and put these two together and hopefully that money coming in. Number one, make sure you pay yourself first. Pay yourself first, no matter how little or no matter how much. Number two, create a budget and stick to the budget. No matter what, you have to stick to the budget. That budget is there to help you, not to condemn you. Number three, take a close look at your needs versus your wants and remove the wants. Number four is create a financial deadline. Have a money goal. Figure out what you're going to do with the money that you're paying yourself and putting away every pay period. And lastly, change the way you think about money and the people who have it. It's not going to do you any good to keep thinking money is negative, money is evil, yada, yada, yada. You have to really think about where these uh, narratives came from and change them for yourself because living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck, struggling and still not making ends meet, that is the negative. That is the evil. That is the real wicked. So remove all of that. Get yourself in a better situation because only you can do it. And once you create these habits and get in the habit of uh, managing your money a lot better, you will notice a huge, huge relief in stress, tension in your shoulders, your headaches will go away. You know, all of these things, you'll be sleeping better and maybe um, you'll even begin to be more active. You know, I've found that when it comes to physical activity, exercise, and taking control over that mental challenge because fitness is a mindset more than it is physical. And once you conquer that, you'll be able to conquer your finances. And I think they go hand in hand. So get a hold of your finances and your mental state around how you view money and how you manage money and also take control of your physical fitness. So hopefully this will help somebody. Leave a comment. Let me know which one of these five financial uh, problem solving ideas that you are going to implement first before the end of the year in this fourth quarter, 2024. And um, share the video with someone who you think these ideas can help. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you on my next one.